you guys don't know yet, I am in the process of enlisting in the Marine Corps. That's partly why I chose it. A lot of my family was in it, so I figured I'd honor them in speaking about the Marine Corps. When you get to boot camp, first thing you see, right here, yellow footprints. You will get screamed at, yelled at. You can't get hit anymore. You used to get hit, thrown down, whatever they wanted to do. And this is 45 degrees. Your feet have to be, and that's the position of attention. You gotta keep your hands in a fist, back towards your, the pockets of your pants. And you stand there, and they can yell, whatever. You can't grin, you can't smile, you can't say anything unless you're spoken to. And one of the speeches you will get goes like this, and we get this every day at PP. Speak and intensity! Get the dicks out of your asses and start doing what I fucking tell you to do. And that's basically how it goes. And they can say anything they want to. And when you have six foot four guys, DIs, 350 pound muscular guys, you, you do what they tell you. And then during PT, or there's uh, different parts of boot camp. There's PT, which is your physical training push-ups, hello dollies, anything and everything they want you to do. And Marine Corps Common Knowledge, Marine Corps Common Knowledge is basically you got your enlisted rank structures, um, you've got your general orders, which is a huge list, and if you mess up one word, it's like a whole two or three sentences for each order. If you mess up one word, switch a word around, You'll get IT, which is intensive training. You'll have three drill instructors yelling and screaming at you what to do for however they, long they feel like. And if you keep repeating it, you could either get kicked out of boot camp or get your whole squad in trouble. And that's not fun. My cousin told me about a guy who did that, and they duct taped him down to his mom because he did stuff wrong all the time. They always got in trouble. And that was just personal experience. They don't accept that. Then you got your history lessons. A big part of boot camp is learning your Marine Corps history. And there's, you learn when, they're, when they were formed in 1775, which a lot of you didn't know, Tun Tavern. And go to the next part. This is basically what the boot camp schedule is. And from personal experience, Staff Sergeant Wilson said, you can look at this all you want till the day that you get shipped boot camp and he said the moment you get there guys are screaming at you you'll forget you'll get told at the beginning of the day and you'll forget by the next hour because you're so you're just told what to do constantly you'll start forgetting stuff and because you're just told what to do you're told when you have to take a shower when you have to go to the bathroom you have five minutes to shower shit and shave as my uncle calls it and they all do that and if you take longer than that you can get IT intensive training and if you keep repeating doing that, you can have night watch, which is basically where you're sitting there and you patrol back and forth with your gun. And it's just basically preparing you for when you go overseas. Somebody's always got to be on watch because you never know when the enemies can strike. And then you've got your, your initial training, which is basically all your hazing, yelling, screaming. Then all of a sudden, when you get to week four or five and stuff like that, you actually start, the instructors are more looking at you more as a human because you made it a little further. But for the first one to three weeks, they really don't care. They look at you as a piece of trash, dirt, whatever. And you got week five, uh, a lot of testing drills and repelling, which is repelling off walls or preparing you for combat, repelling out of airplane or uh, helicopters. Then you got grass week, that's where you sit there and got your actual shooting instructors because you don't they don't want your DIs to be doing your shooting instructions because of the fact that you're gonna want to shoot them because they've been yelling screaming at you telling you a piece of dirt worth nothing your mom gave birth to a pussy and all kinds of stuff so they don't want they don't want the DIs to be out there because somebody's bound to get shot so they have specialized instructors that are marksmen and they teach you through and the grass week part
is actually where they tell you techniques. They sit there and you just dry fire. You aim, you work on all the positions, and they just tell you to squeeze, and they teach you how to limit your movement, your rocking, because there's certain positions that if you're not gonna, if you're rocking too much, you're not gonna be as accurate, and you could lose your life or friend of your life because you weren't, you didn't shoot good enough. And then team eight, our week eight is team week. That's where you basically do a lot of work as a team. You start to build the leadership skills and team, and starting to work together. You do a lot of marches together and all that kind of fun stuff. And then week nine's a line week, basically marches and stuff like that. You start working on your formations. And week ten is practical application evaluation where you're working on your application of your real life scenarios. You work, you actually go on firefights where you have, it's a, it's like a plug on the end of your rifle to help prevent from flash and burns from the muzzle blast. And you fire live rounds and you've got, it's almost like laser tag, if you guys know what laser tag is. You got a box on you and whenever you get shot at, the laser hits it and it starts chirping. Well, you're dead when it starts chirping you're out of the fight so it simulates it and you have to work on all your skills of clearing buildings and stuff and you're put on two different teams and you'll work on clearing and running through the woods and trying not to get hit and week 11 is your final drill that's basically where you're going warrior week is put into that and that's just you're almost there it's like the last step and you go on huge marches and with your full packs, you get awesome food. As Staff Sergeant Wilson told me, he said chow's pretty good after that because you're you're almost there. You're almost a Marine, and so after starving you for the first ten weeks, they'll actually give you something good to eat. And week twelve is your graduation. Your gra uh, graduation is a big deal. If your family can't make it, that's pretty sad because. Everybody wants their family to be there when they when they come home after 12 weeks of boot camp and not seeing any any of your family, any of that. You want to see them being yelled at. And this uh, these are the senior DIs and the drill instructor, which is DIs drill instructor. And these are all the recruits that have became Marines. And this is like your final drill, and you march in front of your family and friends. And uh, your family and friends will be crowded around. You can show them afterwards. After that, you can show them like where you uh, worked out, where you did all this stuff from a distance, and just show them what your life was like. And that right there is what boot camp is all about. Marine Corps insignia. That's what people go to boot camp get yelled and screamed at for. Is the army of wearing that? Because a lot of people have died for the country and wearing that symbol. That's basically what boot camp's all about. And then, after you get out of boot camp, you got your ranks. And this is a NCO sword, which is based off the Army's design. It's got United States Marine Corps etched into here with all kinds of different fancy writing. It's, it's dull, it's just a your standard, it's a decoration. And you can only get this when you become a Lance Corporal, which is an E3 pay grade, because once you're that high, you're, you're not a private, you're not a private first class, you have a little more say and stuff. And that's basically all there is to know about that. It's brass, leather, leather handle and string wrapped around the sheet. And then one of the famous sayings of the Marine Corps is we do motivation checks at PT. And that's oorah. And you gotta say it as loud as you, you can or he'll call you pansies, whatever he wants to call you. So I'd like to try that with you guys, see if you can do it with me. Motivation check! Hoorah. Hoorah. Come on. <laughs> One more time. 